Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Access Virus TI2 desktop synthesizer as an instrument rack in Ableton Live. Uh, a lot of these steps are common to the uh, Virus TI line. Um, a lot of these steps are also common to just working with external synthesizers and VST plugins. So to get started, uh, make sure your Virus TI is up to date with the latest software and connected to an open USB port. It's not recommended that you connect it to a port with USB hubs and make sure your virus is on and uh, before you start up live. Once live is up, bring up your preferences menu with command comma and uh, make sure to check your buffer size and make sure it's set to 128 samples and uh, go into your audio output device here and uh, this is where you're going to decide if, if uh, you're going to run your virus as the main output interface for your for Ableton, running Ableton, or if you're going to run it as an instrument feeding into another audio interface. If you want it to be dedicated, select Virus TI here and run audio cables out of out one and two into your main sub mixer. Uh, in my case, I'm just using Soundflower for this presentation. Um, close out your preferences and find the Virus TI device in your library and drag it into your set. This creates um, what is called a master control track for your multi-instrument VST. And uh, that means that um, all the part data for the 16 parts that can be controlled on the virus TI2 are going to go through this main control track. So automation lanes will be created on this main control track um, as well as um, other data. Um, <clears throat> While it is, while you can drive MIDI data into this track and uh, play the virus this way, um, it's actually recommended that you mute this track now and select no input because we're going to set up MIDI tracks to drive MIDI note data into the virus. To do that, use Command Shift T to create a MIDI track. And uh, under the all ends box here is where you would limit or specify what controller is going to control the virus. Um, in this case, I'm going to leave it as all in, so it's all open. And for all channels, I'm going to select channel one so that I can then map that to the virus TI channel one. Now I'm going to select this track here and command D to duplicate it three times. So I have four total tracks and I found that four is a pretty good number with starting with a virus project. Four layers is a pretty good starting point. If you need more, you can add more, um, but this will get you started. Now for these four tracks, select the second track and ma make sure we fix up the channels to be channel two, mapping to virus channel two, MIDI channel three, virus channel three, and so on. Now I like to also select these and scale them down so that they fit nicely. Um, this is probably a good time to talk about the operating modes that we have available in the virus. To look at those, bring up the VST console, select the patch button here, and you see the USB audio modes. Now take a look at the options we have here are two outs, no input with full sound card operation. We have three outs, no input with partial sound card operation, so your sound card will still output. Um, and then your third option is three outs, one input, and with no, no sound card operation at all. Uh, and this is what I recommend because I really don't recommend using the sound card or trying to use the sound card while you're using Ableton with the virus. And this also gives you the bonus of having an audio input for effects processing, vocoding, and side chaining options. So that's very cool. So select three outs, one input and get out of the utility menu here. And um, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is map these channels or parts in the virus to those actual output buses that we just uh, specified. So to do that, select the part that you're interested in, part one, and go to common and under main out here, select which of the USB virtual outputs we have here to what part we want. So we had part one mapped to USB one left right. Now select part two and map that to USB two left right. Go to part three and select USB three left right. 
and uh, there's only three virtual outputs so this fourth channel here I usually just leave mapped to USB 1 left right you could also select a physical out if you wanted to map it to something a physical output so after that uh, to hear these tracks now and to work with them in Ableton to EQ them and compress them separately which is what you're going to want to do you're going to want to create separate audio tracks now and to do that you just use command T and uh, that creates an audio track and for this track the uh, source we're going to want to select and set to the virus TI source and for the first output here we're just going to leave post effects as the uh, default out and then we're going to let's see always remember to add EQ8 and spectrum to any audio uh, tracks that you're going to create and duplicate or use later down the road um, it's just a time-saving thing that always comes in handy. So drag EQ8 down here, grab Spectrum and drag it down here. And go ahead and clean up the EQ8 so that it's uh, kind of in a useful form so that when you start using it, it's uh, already in a good state for you. It's just one less thing you have to do down the road. So once this is ready to go, select the track and hit Command-D two more times to create your three corresponding output buses for your out for your virtual outputs the second track here go down to the source selection and instead of post effects select the one labeled to virus ti which is going to correspond to your second output bus and for this third audio track select the one labeled three virus ti which is the third bus now i would uh, scale these down a little bit as well so they fit in the context of your larger set and then also arm each of these as well as arming the four MIDI tracks that we have and now we should hear something and that's the uh, default init sound which we'll customize here in a minute but uh, this at least sets up the audio routing um, I should make a side note about side chaining and audio inputs if you want to use audio inputs here um, that's going to require the use of another audio track so command T to create another audio track Leave the audio source, whatever you want, because you're probably going to drop clips or route other audio into this track. Um, the main thing here is to set the routing destination as the virus TI, and then it selects the input of uh, analog 1 and 2, which is the um, virtual 1 and 2 for the virus TI. So now this channel um, you can use for sending any kind of data to the, vi the virus that you want. And to pick up on that data, go back into your virus TI and say, pick this MIDI channel. Um, if you wanted to send audio to this MIDI channel, go into your effects one section under input and down in this drop down, select static. And in the input selection, select left and right. And this is how you send the output to a part or to a vocoder which you would select FX2 and in this drop down is where you would select what channel you want to send to the vocoder. Pretty cool. Now um, last but not least is the step around creating the actual instrument rack. So select the virus TI and press command G to create an instrument rack around it and what this does is give you macro controls which you can then map to useful parameters, popular parameters that you find useful um, in your VST. This also gives you the option of mapping these macros to multiple parameters and controlling the scale at which these parameters operate so you can uh, operate many parameters at once. Um, so to get started here select your, your virus TI and in this little arrow box here, click it and click configure. And the idea here is that you now select what parameters you're going to be using most often um, and that drops them down here as sliders to be mapped and used and um, learned. Um, so to do that in this configure menu just go and, and select the useful parameters. So under the first part here select the probably the uh, in the filter section the filter cutoff would be useful and in the LFO section I would map the LFO clock for LFO 2 and that looks pretty good and then for MIDI part 2 I would also 
select the LFO clock for that one and the filter for that one. So as you can see, I've got some, some uh, parameters down here. Um, there's a few things you might have to clean up from clicking around in the, in the GUIs. Just kind of keep an eye out for that. This unmapped one here, just delete it. Get out of configure mode and then select map mode. And this is where you can uh, map the corresponding parameters to macros, select the parameter and map, map them however you like. <clears throat> when you're done, um, get out of map mode and uh, you should have your device ready to go. Um, one other option here that I recommend for grouping and organization is to select all of the tracks that we've been working with and hit Command G again to group all of these into a master TI group track, which you can name and uh, organize. And when you're all done and everything is organized as you like it, drag this into a comfortable spot that you've made in your library that you will always find. So it's good to create your own folder and uh, drag these things into your own folders for later use. So you select the group track, drag it as a group into this new folder. It will prompt you for a new name. And uh, this can then be recalled and imported into other sessions in the future. So just to show you how useful this is um, and how quick this is, I'm gonna go ahead and select what we've been working on, delete it entirely, and uh, go into one that I've been preparing and uh, see how quick it is. Hopefully we have some better init sounds because I dragged some better init sounds onto the virus before I saved it. So we don't have to hear those anymore. So to hear anything, we're gonna have to go ahead and, and uh, arm all these MIDI tracks and arm all the output tracks that we got right out of the gate and see what we got. We got something. So let's see how the parameters are mapping here. I do have the LFO clock going there. So let's, uh, All right, I hope this has been useful to you in uh, setting up your Access TI2, and I hope that uh, you've enjoyed watching. Thank you.